COO of PJIA reminisces about the catastrophic hurricane season of 2017. Leader of the MJP, Councilman Louis Musselton, explains his decision to cast his vote for Andy Petrus. And man injured after shooting on the Middle Region Road. Those are the headlines for Monday, September 28, 2020. Good evening, viewers. This is SXM Daily News. I am Valerie Von Putten. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a full newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, the St. Martin Police Force, KPSM, had a busy start to the day this morning with a shooting that had taken place in the Middle Region area. Around 11 a.m., the Central Dispatch directed the police patrols to the Middle Region Road close to Romeo's Drive for a shooting that had taken place whereby a man was severely injured. The victim, who sustained a gunshot wound to his upper body, was transported to the St. Martin Medical Center by private vehicle prior to the police's arrival at the scene. After conducting a brief investigation at the scene, it was concluded that the victim, with the initials ORM, 32 years of age, had been injured after having an altercation with an unknown person on the Middle Region Road. The victim is still in critical but stable condition at the St. Martin Medical Center. Personnel of the detective department are currently gathering more information into what transpired before the shooting and an update will be provided once it becomes available. The detectives investigating this case are asking anyone with information to contact the St. Martin Police Force at 721-542-2222, extension 204 or 205, or their anonymous tip line on 9300, which is free of charge. You can also visit the website at www.police.com sxm.sx to report crimes anonymously via the tip contact form or you can leave a private message via their Facebook page Police Force of St. Martin dash Corpse Police St. Martin if you know or suspect something. And now in news from France St. Martin, the right wing and center parties held on to their majority in France's Senate on Sunday Senate President Gerard Lachère said, nearly half of France's 348 Senate seats were up for grabs on Sunday as an electoral college of roughly 92,000 votes to replace the senators in 59 departments and four overseas territories. Half of France's Senate is reflected every three, is re-elected rather, every three years. But this year, the re-election of six senators representing French citizens overseas will be delayed until 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Green Party, meanwhile, which won several of France's major cities in June's municipal election, said that now they now had enough seats to form a political group in the Senate. Green Party Senator Esther Benbassa tweeted that the party could form a group after winning six seats in the election. French President Emmanuel Macron, center-right party, however, struggled to increase seats in the Senate, winning seven to add to the 13 they already have in the upper chamber. Meanwhile, on St. Martin, the third vice president of the Collectivité, Madame Annick Patras, received 15 votes, making her eligible to become the next senator to represent the island in the France Senate. Outgoing Senator Guillaume Arnel, who was seeking a second term in office, received only two votes on Sunday. One of the persons who supported Madame Petrus in the second round of voting on Sunday is the leader of the MJP, Councilman Louis Mussington. He spoke to the Voice of St. Martin's News Department and he explained his decision to cast his vote for the winner. Firstly, let me explain that there are two parts. There was round one and round two. Round two, there are four candidates and my choice was to support the outgoing senator, which was Guillaume Arnel. 
Uh, but unfortunately, he did not obtain sufficient uh, support from the voters uh, to go into round two. Uh, but of course, by law, each candidate could maintain, regardless of the amount of votes they obtain in round one, they can maintain their candidacy for uh, round two if they choose to do so, regardless of the amount of votes. So in this case, Mr. Arnell chose to maintain his candidacy. But I had to make a choice in terms of uh, staying with him, even though I know that he was not going beyond uh, four votes, or may give my false backing to the candidate who had the most chances of winning the seat, therefore going into the Senate uh, in Paris with a, with a strong support from the council so that she could be a, a loud voice for us uh, at the critical hour when definitely we need urgent attention coming out of Paris. And this is the decision that I carefully make, and it was not an emotional decision. It's reasoning in terms of what is best for the future economic, cultural, and financial uh, uh, um, situation of St. Martin. Based on this evaluation that I made, I took the decision to support her. Some would argue that, yeah, but she's from the ruling majority and you are from the opposition. Let it be clear that you must know in the political arena when there's time to be a strong opposition as to when you should be able to join forces so that St. Martin's best interest can be represented in Paris. And that's a decision that I have made, and I'm pleased with it. I have no regrets whatsoever. Like I said, I took the time with my friends and party members to clearly examine the situation. So you're basically saying that Ms. Petrus is the one to represent St. Martin to her fullest capability in Paris. But what will be her focus, area of concern? Well, in a previous discussion, I made it clear to her that we don't need, there are presently 346, if I'm not mistaken, senators in the Senate in France. St. Martin does not have to be just a voice on a national scale where you're looking at national issues. It is of a critical importance that our senator move speedily and efficiently into the various ministries in France to talk eloquently and forcefully about our concerns in regards to our organic law that has to be modified and upgraded, in regards to the financial situation of our country, because it is quite obvious and it's common knowledge to all the ministries in France that we still haven't been compensated properly for the competence which have been transferred to us back in 2007. So therefore, the government of France owes us a huge amount of money. We also have the whole educational issue that has to be reviewed. And as we continue now with our series about the catastrophic damage that was caused at the Princess Juliana International Airport during the passing of Superstorm Irma, Hurricane Maria, and Jose back in 2017, this evening we will continue our conversation with Chief Operations Officer at the airport, Mr. Michel Hyman. In our conversation, Mr. Hyman told us about his reaction when he realized how badly damaged the airport actually was, how 80% of the roof was blown off, and the work that had to be done to get things back on track. We also saw a number of our elect electrical cables that were hanging. So of course our electrical team were not present, so we could not have um, basically turned on any of the um, emergency powers either because you have to look to see where there's shortage or loose cabling to make sure that is corrected before you do you do uh, you know flip the switch back on to turn it on um, so as we walked the different floors we, we saw the devastation and at one point um, you know reaching at the top floor is when we noticed hey the roof is open <laughs> and <clears throat> It was about, uh, I think it was in between 70 to 80 percent of the roof was gone. Um, luckily, it's just that area over our IT room where, where all our servers are located that the roof remained. So that was good, um, you know, in that, in that sense. But other than that, everything else was exposed and open, so water managed to seep in. Um, 
so a lot of the furnitures, the electric, elect, electronic uh, equipments that were um, in the building at the time were all uh, waterlogged. Um, we have a basement. Um, the basement is actually where you know the the, the bags. It's it's a lower floor, actually uh, below uh, sea level, and it was all filled as well. So it's hard to even get through the the water because the the pumps were not on because of you know the electricity um, um, issue we had. So they weren't able to pump the water back out of of the building. Um, so we, you know, inspected the entire um, um, building, and from there we went to the um, the, the adjacent buildings, um, other facilities that we have. For instance, the air traffic control tower, uh, where we had two doors on the um, eastern side um, that was blown in as well. The wind, the rain, and everything got in to those. Um, to the, to the building and actually destroyed all of the equipment in that building. So the entire uh, radar and, and control systems had to be removed and actually um, uh, replaced. They had a few broken glass, et cetera, but those were the minor parts, but the equipment was more of a critical nature and were more um, severely damaged um, um, by this um, devastation. Um, in addition to that, we also had the um, we also had the airfield um, lighting system, the airfield lighting system. Uh, that's the runway lights, etc. They were also destroyed because you know they are exposed to the wind and everything, and um, you know as the debris hits them, they they fly away and stuff. So all of those things were destroyed in the hurricane. Um, so, you know, it, it was a lot of damage beyond my comprehension at the time. And I could recall one of the first thing I say to myself was, wow, never expected this. Uh, secondly, <laughs> yeah. secondly, um, how are we going to even start uh, rebuilding? Um, so. Immediately following my, my observation of all the damage, you know, I, I immediately try again to reach um, the supervisory board of directors, people within government to inform them of the status of the airport. And <clears throat> basically from there started calling um, on, on the insurance uh, um, people to inform them of the situation at the airport as well, so that let them know, hey, we have a major claim here that we have to address. And still to come, Prime Minister of St. Martin says that we are the ones who are empowered to stop the spread of COVID-19. And I'll have a detail to that story and more than FXM Daily News. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Megawati is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie from Putin. And in COVID-related news on St. Martin, as of September the 27th, there were 11 persons who tested positive for COVID-19, increasing the total active cases to 90. The total number of confirmed cases is now 644. The Collective Prevention Services, CPS, are monitoring 
86 people in home isolation. Three patients remain hospitalized at the St. Martin Medical Center and one patient is isolated and is being monitored. The total number of deaths due to COVID-19 remains at 22. The number of people recovered since the first case surfaced on St. Martin remains at 532. 135 people are in quarantine based on contact tracing investigations carried out by CPS of persons who may have been in contact with any of the active cases. CPS has tested 1,029 travelers arriving at the Princess Juliana International Airport and 1,985 people throughout the community. As the numbers continue to fluctuate, CPS will continue to actively execute its contact tracing measures. Despite the increase in positive cases, Minister uh, Richard Paniflek reminds the public that we must wear our masks, practice social distancing, sanitize your hands frequently, wash your hands with soap, and refrain from mass gatherings in order to flatten the curve. Meanwhile, Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Sylvia Jacobs, is reminding the general public of the importance of adhering to the health and safety protocols and encouraging efforts for those who are currently facing COVID-19. She said, we are the ones who are empowered to stop the spread. The Prime Minister was making the observation at Wednesday's Council of Ministers weekly press briefing. I'd like to add my two cents to the encouraging efforts of all those out there who are currently facing COVID-19 or have family members or loved ones facing it or are still struggling with the death, the passing of someone from COVID-19. Community of St. Martin, we are the ones empowered to stop the spread of this disease. Government can put measures in place. There can be all types of signs posted in, in glass windows, in businesses, etc. But what we do when no one is looking is what will cause this disease, this virus to stop. Our behavior, we want to hug, kiss and handshake, but we have to know to wash hands often, to wash hands often, because that is the only way and know who you are constantly in contact with. We must do all to protect especially the vulnerable, as it is the vulnerable who are at risk of dying from the disease. Hundreds of thousands of people around the world have had COVID and continue to be infected. We must build our immune systems so we are able to fight the disease, and we must do everything possible to protect our most vulnerable. Let us work together to build back St. Martin and remain hopeful moving forward. Thank you. And as we continue now with more news and COVID-related news out of the island of Curaçao, the government of Curaçao reported on September the 28th, 2020, that there are six new COVID-19 cases on the island and that seven positive cases have recovered. Of those six cases, three are linked to known sources and three are from unknown sources. Currently, there are two people in the hospital. However, their conditions are not yet known. The epidemiology team continues its contact tracing efforts and you are being reminded to please be safe and adhere to hygiene and social distancing rules. Now, turning to our weather forecast for September the 28th, 2020, lingering moisture and instability associated with a recent tropical wave will cause showers, particularly during the overnight to early morning hours. Some of these showers may be associated with thunderstorms. Thereafter, a drier and more stable atmosphere is expected to improve conditions across the region. Seas will remain slight to moderate during the next few days. So the outlook through Tuesday evening, partly cloudy with isolated showers. Now, let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, Interim Director at the Mental Health Foundation says there is a competent management team in place. You'll have the details of that story and more with SXM Daily News Research.
Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. PIN code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. And as we continue now with more news, viewers, the interim director of the St. Martin Mental Health Foundation, Eileen Healy, will once again be going into retirement. Her departure will take effect on Wednesday, September the 30th. Ms. Healy, who was already on retirement leave in December of 2014, was requested to come back to assist the Mental Health Foundation for a year following the passage of Hurricane Irma in 2017. However, she ended up serving for over three years. Speaking to the Voice of St. Martin's News Department, Ms. Healy stated that the Mental Health Foundation has a competent management team in place and therefore can effectively run the daily affairs of the institution. The outgoing Mental Health Interim Director also refuted reports that there is division between the management team and employees at the establishment. At a certain age, you should retire. And, you know, mental health has not been in the past years run by Ian Healy, but we have a management team, we have department coordinators, we have staff, and they all work fairly independently, they know their job. So, I mean, I feel that now I can step down, regardless of the fact that it's very hard to find people to really manage the foundation. So together with the management team and the board, we have agreed that, you know, with Dr. Peltzweck as in them, but we have an excellent HR lady, we have a good financial management. So they together will form a team for the coming year, and then hopefully when COVID settles down, the foundation can again start to look at recruitment or what other options there are to replace the function of director. Mm -hmm. So that is actually the plan. Why have you decided to retire or go into retirement at this time, Miss Hilly? I don't know if you remember that I was retired in December 2014, mm -hmm. and after Irma, the board asked me to help out for a year, and that ended up being three years. Now, the laws on St. Martin stipulate that a foundation can give a contract three times a year, but then if they extend it again, it will be a permanent contract. Mm -hmm. And like I just explained, the foundation is fine and will really be able to run itself so, yeah, I can move more to the background. I can have an advisory role. It's still not finalized with the board, but hopefully by the end of this month, all of that is regulated. Member of the SAPP, Dr. Anders uh, Raymond Gisirun, speaking at their weekly press conference on Thursday last, September the 24th, has responded to the Minister of Public Health, Labor and Social Development, the Honorable Richard Panefleck, regarding the usage of the blood glucose testing meters. Mr. Jesserun says that the meters provided by Medicosmetics are still not up to par. He elaborates further. The Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, in answering a question of a member of the press in last week's Council of Ministers press briefing, said that he was awaiting an official report on the issue concerning the quality of the glucose meters. But as far as he was informed, lab tests done concluded that the meters now provided by Medicosmetics on the request of SZV were okay. According to the minister, the diabetic patients were not instructed on how to use the meter. The minister, himself being a diabetic, wanted to show himself how to use the glucose meter and he promised to give some professionals to prepare an informative program to instruct the public 
on how to use the glucose meters. In the meantime, the Consumers Coalition and the Consumers Lawyer Core Merx have received more complaints, not only from diabetic patients, but also from experienced nurses in the field, from healthcare professionals. We recommend the Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labour to stop blaming the diabetic patients by insinuating that they do not use or they not know how to check their blood sugar and regulate their insulin intake. He can better take this issue serious and don't wait for worsened consequences. Two weeks ago, the Inspectorate of Health called us for a meeting on the issue. We provided an update on the complaints that we have received on the issue of the faulty glucose meters. The inspectorate informed us that he was in correspondence with SRV and has requested the quality requirements that SRV has demanded from the companies that had to bid. Our lawyer also has requested this information from SRV but this information is still not forthcoming. A professional nurse of the White and Yellow Cross Foundation, an advocate for the clients in the district nursing, sent us pictures from the readings she did for a couple she did this week Monday on September the 21st. The husband on the freestyle precision Neo gave a reading of 118, whereas the perfect tree gave a reading from 206. His wife had a reading on the freestyle of 127, whereas the perfect tree gave a reading of 197. Based on this comparison, which meter gives the correct reading of the glucose level? Based on the reading of the meters, what do patients have to do with insulin? The same action to regulate their blood sugar? What happens in practice is that the diabetic confronted with a higher reading will take extra medication which gives side effects and which actually is not needed based on the readings of the meter that they were using for years. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening, Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Sylvia E. Jacobs, raised the Sustainable Development Goal SDG flag on Friday, September 25, 2020. On this commemorative day, the SDG flag was raised throughout the Kingdom of the Netherlands. The government of St. Martin remains committed to the Sustainable Development Goals agenda. This agenda serves as a tool for development for St. Martin and the rest of the world. Furthermore, the SDG Day is an opportunity to showcase and appreciate organizations and persons that contribute to the sustainable development of St. Martin. As such, the St. Martin Development Fund, SMDF, K1 Britannia, UNESCO, and former Bach Program Manager for SDGs, Ms. Luki Morales, were presented with certificates of appreciation for their outstanding contribution to the SDGs for St. Martin. The government of St. Martin will continue to acknowledge and support efforts by civil society as their contribution to St. Martin are boundless. And with that, viewers, we've come to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten, thanking you so much for joining me this evening. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow.